Hello again. Welcome back to Introducing Persistence. In this lesson, we're going to take a quick look at using the history view with Java source files. Then we'll learn how to deploy the application as a jar file. Finally, we'll run our Java program as a standalone application in both Windows and in Linux. In the last lesson, we saw how to compare the current version of our XML file to an older version. We can do the same thing with our Java class source files. First, let's open the history view. To do that, we go Window, Show View, Other, we expand the Team folder, select History and press OK. Now, on my system, it's showing the history in this lower part of the workbench, but on yours it may be over here on the right and we can just drag it over there to move it so we have a vertical presentation. In Eclipse, we can drag our views to different locations as we discussed in the Total Beginners tutorial. Another tutorial called Using the Eclipse Workbench covers how to use views, perspectives, shortcut keys, and other Eclipse Workbench features. Now we have some options in this view we can use this first button to refresh the view. The next button toggles a link with the editor. So if this is toggled on, as it is here, when we change to a different source file, it automatically shows us the history for the source file that's currently open in the editor. So we'll select My Utilities. Here we see the history for my utilities. If we click on one of these and then right click and select compare with local, we see something similar to what we had with the XML file. We'll maximize this. In the upper part of the screen, we see what we call the Java structure compare. And this is showing we've got some additional imports and then these two methods were changed and then these two methods were added. The plus sign indicates they were added. And then in the lower part of the screen we see the actual changes. And as we click here we can see what was changed down below. So if we click on a method we see just that, the comparison of that method. And as before we can use these buttons to either copy all the changes and in effect recover an earlier version of the file or copy a current change from from the old version to the current version. So as you can see this is a very useful way to be able to examine exactly what has changed in the source file and if needed to restore from a prior version of a class or a method. So now let's work on deploying our My Library application. Close this. Now so far all of our methods have been run from inside Eclipse using the unit test test runner. Now we're going to create an executable jar file for our application that will let us run the application from outside of Eclipse or in fact on any computer that can run Java. In a Total Beginners tutorial, we created a main method in the My Library class. To execute a Java program, one of the classes must have a main method so that the Java Runtime Engine, or JRE, knows where to start running the program. So if we open up the My Library class, we can go run, run as, Java application and the main method will execute. And in this case, if you remember from the Total Beginners tutorial, the main method prints out some information to the console after creating uh, a My Library object. Now the main method right now does not include saving our My Library to an XML file. So the first thing we'll do is modify the main method of the My Library class to include some of our new methods. If we double click on the main method here, it opens up that method in the editor. 
We'll go down here to the end of the method. Now we'll add some code to save the test my library object to an XML file and then get it back as a new my library object and then print out some information about that new object. So here we're just going to go my utilities dot save my library to XML file and we'll call the file test main dot XML and the object we want to save is the test library and we'll move this over so we can see it better then in the next line we're going to create a new my library ob object called new my library and we're going to read the file back using the my utilities dot get my library file from XML file and then we're going to read back the same file test main dot XML and then finally on the new my library object we'll run the print status method to print out some information about it to the console to make it easier to interpret the console output let's add a message printing information from saved XML file and then we'll highlight this and use code assist to add the system out println and we'll save so let's run it again since we've just run it we can use the rerun button and let's look at the console output so here we see it says printing information from saved XML file and then here's our print status report again now let's create a standalone application to do this we need to create a jar file for our project when we write our Java source code, we create a source file with a file extension of .java, like person.java. The Java compiler compiles this text file into a special format called bytecode and creates a .class file, like person.class. Our small project has four classes, so we have four class files. A real-life project might have dozens or hundreds of classes. These .class files are the executable programs that the Java runtime engine needs to run the program. To make it easy to package and deploy these class files, we use the jar format, which is just a special compressed zip archive that contains all of the classes. That way we can just distribute one JAR file instead of a large number of .class files. Now in addition to the class files, the jar archive file contains a special file called a manifest. The manifest contains information about the files packaged in the jar file. In some cases, Eclipse can create the manifest automatically for us when we create the jar file. If the JRE will need to get any class files from a different jar file, this information needs to be added to the manifest manually. Since our classes depend on classes from the extreme jar file, we need to create our own manifest file. First, we'll create a text file in Eclipse that will serve as our manifest. So we'll go File, New, Untitled Text File. And we enter in three lines as follows. First line is manifest-version colon 1.0. Second line is main dash class colon org dot persistence dot tutorial dot my library. And third line is class dash path colon extreme dash 1.2.2 dot jar and then we press enter. The first line always says manifest version 1.0. The second line tells the JRE where to find the main method so it says the main method for this program is going to be located in org persistence tutorial dot my library and the capitalization is important here then the third line is what tells the JRE where to look 
for other classes if they're not in the primary jar file. In this case, we entered extreme-1.2.2.jar. It's important to have an enter after this last line, so there's a blank line at the bottom. Otherwise, the JRE won't be able to find this third line. This has to match the jar file that you downloaded from the Xtreme website. So if it's 1.2.3 or some other version, make sure that this version number and name matches exactly the file you downloaded. Okay, so now we're going to save this. And it asks us where we want to save it. Let's save it in the our project, the persistence tutorial. And we can call this anything we want. We're going to call it manifest.text just so it's clear what this is for. And we press OK. Before we create our jar file, let's check what's called the compiler compliance level. We'll go to Window, Preferences, Java, Compiler, and that opens up this dialog box. Now if we look, it says Compiler Compliance Level 6.0. Now as we mentioned way back at the start of the tutorial, we needed to have Java 5 or Java 6 installed to run Eclipse and to do this tutorial. I have Java 6 installed on my XP machine. Now when we plan to deploy an application to other computers, we don't know what version of Java they might be running. For example, my Linux machine is running version 5. If I try to run class files compiled at compliance level 6, they won't run correctly on a level 5 JRE. Now fortunately this is easy to fix. We can just change this level to 5.0, say OK. Eclipse tells us now that we need to do a full rebuild and we'll say yes. And now when we create the jar file, that jar file will run correctly in a level 5 JRE as well as a level 6 JRE. And as long as we're not using a Java feature that is new to version 6, everything will compile correctly at the level 5 compliance. Now we'll create our jar file. And to do that we go File, Export, Jar File, Press Next. Now we have to select what classes we want to export. And here we just want to export everything that's in our SRC folder. We don't need our test classes. And we're going to export this to a file called persistence.jar. This up so we can see. Then we'll press Next. And leave these the default. Press Next. Now this is very important. Since we already created a manifest file, we'll select Use Existing Manifest instead of Generate the Manifest File. Remember that we needed to create the manifest file because we had to add the Xtreme jar file to the class path. So now we browse to find the manifest file. And we're going to use Manifest Text. Press Finish. And now we have our jar file. Now to run our program, we need to have the two jar files in our directory, persistence.jar and the Xtreme jar file. We can execute this as follows. I'm in Windows XP, so we'll go down, do Start, Run, CMD. This opens up the Windows System Console. The directory we saved this to was Eclipse, so we'll go change directory to the Eclipse directory. We'll do a dir star.jar to make sure we've got both jar files, persistence.jar and the Xtreme jar. So the command to run the jar is java-jar and then the name of the primary jar, which is persistence.jar. Press Enter. And here we have the same output at the system console that we had inside the Eclipse and the Eclipse console. Now we switched over to Linux. 
And we'll open up a terminal session by going Accessories Terminal. And then first we'll check that Java is installed. So we go Java-Version and it shows that the Java is installed and it's version 1.5 which is the same as level 5. Now we've copied the two JAR files over persistence.jar and the extreme.jar and then to run this we go java-jar persistence.jar just like we did in Windows and we can see that the program runs and produces exactly the same output as it did in Windows. At this point We've completed our work with persistence using XML files. In the next lesson, we'll start working on saving our My Library using Java serialization. This is the end of Lesson 10. I'm Mark Dexter saying so long for now.